if you save 50k monthly at the end of 20 years you would have saved 12 million but if you invest 50k monthly at 5% at the end of the same 20 years you would have 79 million Isn't that amazing? Instead of just having 12 million, at the end of the 20 years, you would have 79 million. That is amazing. And that is the impact of compounding. So let's talk about compounding today. So if you're able to save 50K monthly, at the end of one year, you would have saved 600K. At the end of 20 years, you would have saved 600 times 20, which is 12 million. Now, if we decide to invest that 600K annually at 5%, let's see what we'll have after 20 years. So we'll have 600K. Invested at 5% for the first year, add another 600k to it, invested at 5% for the second year, add another 600k to it, and then guess what? At the end of 20 years, you would have 20.8 million. At the end of 20 years, you would have 20.8 million as against your savings of 12 million, right? and you would have gotten an additional 8.8 .8 million. Isn't that amazing? Let's see what happens when you increase the rate to 10%. At the end of 20 years, you would have 37 million and you have gained an additional 25 million. This is called the power of compounding and it is very, very important as an investor to understand it and to take advantage of it. So this is compound interest and it is the eighth wonder of the world. There are three elements of the magic of compound interest, time, the amount you're investing, interest rates. I know that a lot of people are very, very particular about interest rates. They're like, okay, interest rates are so low. Interest rates are at 4%, at 3%, so there is no point. I'm here to tell you that time and the amount you're investing have more impact on your value in the future than the actual interest rate you're investing at because of compounding. Now, I'll stick around to the end. So I'll tell you how to actually take advantage of compounding because it's not automatic. So even if you invest at 3%, I'm not telling you that automatically you would benefit from compounding. There are things you need to do to make sure that you benefit from compounding in your investing. So the three factors, the first um, element of compounding is time. Now let's go back to that same sheet and imagine that instead of 20 years you did 40 years and that you did it at five percent right if you did 40 years meaning that if you start investing at 20 and then you work till you're 60 and all you do all you do without increasing the amount which we all know will increase all you do is that you invest 50k monthly right at the end of the 40 years, you would have 76 million. 76 million compared to your actual input of 24. That is amazing on any front. All you put into this investment was 24 million, but now you have 76 million at the end of the 40 years. Now, patience is key. That is the first thing I need to tell you. To so benefit from compounding, you need to leave it. You need to give it time. Think of it like planting a seed, right? You have to leave it and you have to give it time. There are some trees that take five years. There are some trees that take 10 years and then they begin to blossom every year and they begin to bring forth fruit every year, right? But you have to give it time. It is one important thing when you want to benefit from compounding. You have to give it time. Now, the second thing is the amount that you put into the investment. Now, let's go back to our 20 year, right? And then increase it to 200K. 200k is about $400 monthly, right? In the same 20 years, you would have saved up 48 million, but how much would you have? You would have 83 million, which is that which means that you'd have gotten an additional 35 million in that same period. I think that is amazing on any front. What am I telling you? The amount you invest matters. So even if you can only start with 50k, understand that your pay is going to increase as you grow. Like even if you start up as an analyst, you will grow and you become an associate, you become a vice president, you will grow. 
The major thing you need to commit to is that as your income increases, your savings will also increase. So we've talked about time. The fact that you have to give it time to grow. It's not about investing and taking it out, right? You have to give it time. The second thing is your amount should also grow. That is when you take advantage of it. That is when the value really, really comes to you. So imagine that you start with 200K and you keep it at 200K for 20 years. But just imagine that you start with 200K and then the next year you do 250 and then at some point you are at 500, at some point you are at 1 million. Think about it. it like 76 million in 20 years is the list you would have. Just imagine if you double it or if you, if you make it up to 1 million in those same 20 years, right? What would you have? 416 million. That is amazing. Guys, that is amazing. Don't miss out on this. Just start wherever you start with what you have. I've told you, whilst we recognize the fact that a higher amount is better, but even starting with 50K is not bad. Starting with 50K and committing, 50K is $100. 50K is like 70 pounds, depending on what currency you are in, right? Um, but you have to start and you have to respect that 1% or that 2% or that 3% um, that you can get, right? Now, if you are wondering about where to invest to actually get 5%, I have a free resource. I'll drop the link in the description box. It's a free resource on where and how to invest and it will point you in the right direction, giving you the, giving you the basic mindset you need to start with and also pointing you to where to actually start investing. Um, so thank me later when you get it. <laughs> so now the final point is the rates. Now, um, imagine if you started with the same 50K. Let's go back to our humble beginnings of 50K, which is about $100. And you are able to do 3%. It might not sound like much, but after investing um, 12 million, you would have 16, which is not bad, guys. It is not bad. Let's not lie to ourselves. If all you have is 50K and if, if that is where the market is. Now, bear in mind that this 3% is like fixed income, like savings, money market investments. If you don't know what that is, go and watch my videos. Just sit down and binge watch all my videos. But just understand that this 3%, you can get more with stocks. You can get, get, you can get higher than that if you invest in stocks or if you... um do some PE investing. Like there are so many things you can do that can definitely get you more than 3%, right? But you just need to start. Just have that mindset of putting away a certain amount of money, right? And being diligent with earning something on it. That is the most important thing. Just keep earning something on it. Um, now, so that's the value of the rate. Now, imagine if this rate now goes to 10. Wow, wow, wow. What would you have in that same period? You have 37 million. As against and you'd have gained about 25 million guys especially if you're in nigeria it might sound like 10 percent is really low but no treasury bills are about 10 percent yield right now you should be in them if you don't have any other options if you don't know what else to do you should be in them stocks generally on average the s p will give you positive returns double digit returns over a period right so you have to take advantage of it they are dividend paying stocks so you can benefit from those also you know, so there are options, but I'm just telling you the minimum. But what is the simple, most important rule in the magic of compound interest? Simple. Just leave your money in that investment and whatever returns you get, reinvest it. So for all the people that, okay, I keep my capital and then when the return comes, I yellow with it and then I... I spend, I have fun, and then I keep the capital there. You are not benefiting from compound interest. The benefit of compound interest comes when you reinvest your returns, meaning that that interest that you got, you reinvest it. That is the only rule. You have to keep that money invested. You have to keep the re returns invested. That is how you benefit from compound interest. That's how you, you benefit from the accumulated growth. Now, put, to put it in context, um, if you get your 600K and then you um, get your 60K, but then you don't add it, right? So we take out the plus F7 here. What you would have and you drag it is that at the end of the 20 years, you would have collected that much interest 
but you'll be back to square one. You'll just have your savings. <laughs> Is that clear? So the benefit of compounding comes when you reinvest the returns. Please subscribe to my channel. Feel free to ask any questions you may have in the comment section. And don't forget that there are two things you can't outsource your health and your finances. You have to engage. Cheerios.